Hey gang, welcome back to another video. Now, whenever I do a project that uses any kind of 3D printing, I'm often asked how I learned how to 3D model. So in this video, I'm going to show you a couple of the steps that I took early on to help me get a better sense of how 3D modeling software works. And in this case, I'm going to show you how to convert a photo into an actual 3D model. So let's get to it. Whenever there's something I'd like to model, I try to take a photo of it from directly in front and level with the object. But sometimes that's challenging. Thankfully, there's Photoshop's Perspective Warp tool that will help me to square it up. This tool allows me to define the corners of my object, and then will automatically shift the geometry of the photo to make the lines parallel. Once it's done the work, I'll take a quick screen grab of the image, and then I can import it into my 3D modeling software. In Fusion 360, I'm able to define a canvas for my model. This lets me drop a partially transparent version of my photo onto the axis of my choosing so that I can basically trace the design over the top of it. But before I get to tracing, I'll need to calibrate my image. This calibration lets me define the scale of my canvas image by dropping two points and providing a dimension. In this case, I know that I want to scale this to fit a one inch acrylic tile. So I'll define this first red square as one inch and then the image will scale accordingly. With our canvas placed and our scale defined, we can jump into the modeling. 3D modeling for objects like this one are essentially creating a series of sketches made from squares or circles and assigning them a dimension. So I'll start by sketching a one inch square and we'll then use the rectangular pattern tool to duplicate it and create a row of five equally spaced tiles. Then I can select them and define a thickness of 1 8 of an inch, which is the height of my acrylic tiles. Because I don't have a profile view of this panel, I'm going to be making some assumptions as to the thickness of each section. But we'll start making a series of boxes and then extruding those boxes to whatever height I think will look best. When working on a part like this, I tend to use a subtractive design approach. For example, rather than sketching this area with three notches missing, I'll just create a simple rectangle and then add another that's the size of the notch I want to remove. Then I can extrude everything except for those notches to make the larger shape. Then I can repeat these steps until I've got all of the interior shapes defined and extruded at heights that work well together. At this point, I realized that I'll need to create a pocket for the one inch tiles to sit in. So I selected my initial square sketch and extruded it, which will cut those shapes out of my model. The last bit of the interior section is this top brow. I'll once again create a rectangle, and this time we'll use a circle to define the small rounded edge. Then I can extrude my shapes. This step gets repeated for the same detail at the bottom, although this time I'll be using those circles to remove part of the design. The last part of this model is the outer frame which has an instep and rounded corners. So I'll start by defining the outside dimensions, followed by the extrude function to make it taller than the rest of the model. And then we'll select the line where the frame edges meet and use the fillet function to create a soft curve. I'll repeat this process for the instep as well. The last thing to add to complete this model are the small round details. 
So I'll create a circle plus two smaller circles and we'll extrude it to match the height of the upper brow piece I made earlier. I'll also add a slight round over to the edge with the fillet tool before making three copies and moving them to their final positions. And then I think we can call this complete. So there you have it. And while I know there's definitely a learning curve to 3D modeling, Hopefully this will help to sort of reorient your thinking about how 3D models are made, and maybe it'll help you along your way to learn how to 3D model on your own. Well, that's gonna do it for this one. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, but most importantly, go make something. <laughs>